So thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's really an honor to have you on. Thanks, Charlie. So we've been living in the world of quarantine, right? Like this is like the worst possible thing for like the usual get up and get healthy way of yeah. seeing the world. Um, so what have you seen in terms of where people are at, what people are thinking about vis-a-vis -vis their health, where we are in the world right now? So um, I think a lot of people right now are stuck in a bit of a rut. Um, in the beginning of COVID, when everybody was um, at home and in lockdown, I think people actually, it worked out better for a lot of people because I think people were eating healthier because they were just going out to buy what they needed. Um, there was a lot of people baking things and, um, you know, doing a lot of homemade cooking. Um, if you remember actually way, probably a few months ago, there was like a shortage of, of flour and yeast. Like you couldn't find those on the supermarket shelves because everybody was like cooking and making food from scratch scratch, which, um, which was excellent and really good for healthy eating. I think over the past few months, um, you know, some people have been experiencing stress and have been at home and a lot of people are just out of their normal routines. And I think just like, you know, any routine, it's important to kind of stick to a schedule for a lot of people. I think with healthy eating and being active when you're not in a routine, it's actually hard. And, you know, stress causes emotional eating. And I think people are at a point where they kind of want to go back to how they were eating eating before and how they were living before, but they're kind of stuck in a bit of a rut where things may be seeming a little bit overwhelming for them. I think that's exactly right. I think when we, it's so funny. It, it's funny how when quarantine hit, we, I, at, least, at least in other areas, like we had all these plans and we're going to do this and do that. And like for the first few days, it's like, we're going to take advantage, take advantage. And then like slowly the chaos ensues and yeah. then you have to like readapt. So for, for, for many, you know, you're sitting around going, I can't believe it's been so many months. How did I get this together? And um, we have a chance, like always, to get better every week. Summertime, you can yeah. get out more. Um, I don't know, depending on where you are, some of the restrictions have let up. So what would you suggest? Like if someone comes in and says, listen, I'm in a rut. I haven't been doing this for a while. I, I need like a jump start. I need something to do, to think about, just to get going again, how would you start it up again? Okay, so and that's a great question. And a lot of even my clients now that I've been meeting with so far via Zoom, but kind of have been experiencing that. And I think the whole notion of taking something on something sometimes can seem actually like overwhelming and you don't almost know where to begin. So, I mean, the most important um, strategy that I find works with, you know, majority of people and is actually a really simple goal is just making sure that you're eating actually three meals a day and at least two to three snacks and not going more than four to six hours um, between meals without having something. So that's sort of like the basic principle that I feel is important. Um, that being said, um, it's actually really important not to overwhelm yourself and set like really large goals because that can be really challenging. Sometimes, you know, you want to just do something drastic to be like, okay, I'm just starting, you know, fresh the next day and, you know, away with my old, you know, eating quarantine eating habits. But sometimes, you know, that can actually lead people to not be able to achieve their goals because it's so overwhelming. So what I like to do with my clients is actually develop what we call SMART goals. And SMART um, is the acronym specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time specific. So I'll just give you like a practical example. So as opposed to saying like, okay, um, every day this week, I'm going to eat healthy, which sounds great. Um, you would basically take that overall goal and break it up into something very specific. So an example could be, you know, for someone who let's say doesn't eat breakfast every day, I'm going to eat breakfast Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, I'm going to have steel cut oatmeal at 730 in the morning. So that's a really large goal that now we've taken and actually broken apart to be something that could be very attainable, hopefully. Now, if you're able to do that five days a week, well, that's great. But the idea is that you're not setting yourself up to fail from the beginning because the goal is very specific and hopefully manageable to you. Wow, that's exactly right. I think you get going, you build momentum, and then you know you sort of build off that momentum. How would you suggest in terms of exercise, in terms of um, you know the the fitness what would you suggest in terms of getting going in that world um right. especially in this new world that we live in right now you know it's yeah. funny sometimes i'm home you know sometimes i work from home during days and like if i ever like exercise like in the middle of the day i feel weird like i'm used to exercising like right. you know, outside business hours so like you know how how do you how do you you know recommend somebody start to put into their 
new normal day, some level of exercise? Right. So that's a great question. Actually, I'm personally somewhat passionate about physical activity. Charlie, I ran Team Life with you a few years ago. So my husband and I are big runners um, back in Toronto. Um, it's been hard for me actually being in New York out of my schedule. I'm not used to, you know, I, I run actually every morning. So that's just been a personal challenge. Um, and it's especially difficult when you're working from home because you're just kind of like out of your element. And it kind of seems strange, like, oh, am I just going to go for a run at 12 o'clock in the afternoon when it seems like you should be home? So it's a little yeah. bit shifting what the new norm is like, but also using that same kind of acronym of SMART goal setting is that just doing something that really is practical and that can work for you. So hey, you may not be realistic to like run six days, you know, five days a week or to go to the gym, but even it could be something like going for a walk around the block, you know, three times a week after dinner, finding something or some time in your day that actually works for you. It doesn't have to be what we call normal. You know, yeah. if 12 o'clock afternoon, you're home and you're working from home, then go out at that time or go out early in the morning or late at night. As long as you're getting it in, it will make a difference. You know, you want to try and at least aim for at least between three to 60 minutes, you know, uh, in total throughout the day, even three, three days to start, but anything you do is going to be better than nothing. So as opposed to saying like, Oh, forget it. I just can't fit the time in. Like, even if you could just do, you know, twice a week, one week and the next week build up, eventually you'll get there. But the key thing is to just get off the couch and just yeah. to start with something small. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. And I am sure okay. we put these in into practice. We'll be able to be better and better every day, which is really the goal. And uh, both in our souls, but also in our bodies. Thanks so much. Thanks. Perfect.